Over changes, Julia, your take on the session today. Uh, as Michael said, really eyeing uh, corporate results for a change. It was a good result by the Australian market. We saw a gain of about 0.4%. And actually, the market, the highest level that we've seen it since May. So we're reaching the highest level that we've seen in a number of months now. Once again, we did see the materials and the energy sector leading the gains. So that's because the market's feeling a little bit more upbeat about global sentiment. And I guess globally expecting to uh, see uh, the Eurozone uh, buying bonds. So that's helped to, uh, I guess, buoy sentiment all around the region. But Michael's right, we are focused focusing in on corporate earnings and I guess not a lot of investors willing to jump into the water ahead of some key earnings this week as well as next week. So volumes extremely quiet, under $3 billion being traded today. And of course tomorrow is when the big guns start to come out. We see the first half result coming through from Rio Tinto and just ahead of that result we've seen the first half results coming through from Extrada. And it's been quite interesting. In 2012 they've d decided to defer about $1 billion worth of capital expenditure and this is a key thing that the market is going to be watching for in the results presentations from Rio Tinto as well as BHP Billiton. And if we actually drill down to the results of Extrada, we've seen profit down by 33% and revenue down by around about 7%. And they're facing the same kind of problems our, our commodity-based miners have in that we've seen lower commodity prices and rising costs. If we have a look at Rio Tinto, we're expecting to see a profit result of $5.07 billion tomorrow. And that would be uh, down 35% from the previous year. If we have a look at consensus, it's $4.94 billion. Now, Rio is going to come out with its result after market hours about 5 p.m. So no doubt uh, all ears are going to be peeled in for that one. That's the first out of the big ones. And then on Thursday we hear from the likes of Telstra where we see full year results there as well as News Corp coming out. So it doesn't look like a lot of investors willing to jump into the water ahead of some key earnings. So some very light volumes going through the market today. Reporting season now. Lots of results out today. Cochlear's result one that uh, didn't really get the thumbs up from investors today. We did know that it did have that voluntary recall of one of its devices and that certainly hurt the numbers but it says it hasn't lost market share nonetheless uh, shareholders punishing that one today. This is uh, quite an unusual one because we know that there had been quite a wide uh, variance in terms of expectations coming into Cochlear's results because a lot of investment houses uh, were quite divided in how uh, Cochlear's market share would have been impacted in terms of that recall. Uh, but if we have a look at Cochlear's, it actually came in above our expectations. We were expecting to see revenue of $746 million, actually came in at $779 million and we were expecting to see a profit of $49 million and we saw a profit result of $57 million dollars. So I suspect some of it would have been uh, buying on the rumour and selling on the facts. So a bit of profit taking coming into the stock. It has held up fairly well over the last few months. The stock down by 5.1% so selling after the result but the actual result coming in ahead of our expectations. Most of the, the mining services stocks to report today and that was a cracker of a result. Mm -hmm. Shares up almost 10% today. What did they love about these numbers? Kate, I mean the numbers were in line with expectations but the fact is that Bradkin came out with a profit downgrade back in April and the stock was absolutely punished back then. So if we have a look at Bradkin shares over the last three months we've actually seen the stock price losing about 20% in value. Given the results today and that the fact that they were in line with expectations it does look like that sell-off has been overdone. So if we have a look at Bradkin shares over the last year this is what it looks like and you can see after that profit downgrade in April just the extent of the slide there. So today coming in on expectations their guidance was for EBITDA between 210 to 220 $20 million dollars coming on the higher end of expectations there 220.4 million dollars they were expecting to see profit between 95 to 102 million dollars they actually came in at 100.8 million dollars and the fact that we have seen I guess those mining service companies with a bit of a question mark hanging over them uh, especially seeing some of the commentary that has been coming out from big miners like Extrada and Vale I guess uh, reassuring that Bradkin coming out with quite a strong result it looks like FY13 looking pretty good as well but the main reason I think for that bounce back that we saw today was that big decline that we saw from April after that downgrade. It looked like it had been overdone and we saw the stock bouncing back by around about 10% today.